My name's David Harris, I'm the Managing Director of Kangaroo Island Connect. In 2017 and again in 2018 we dredged to commence our ferry service at Cape Jervis. And I refer to photograph number one being the amount of spoil we dug out from around our berth and in the northern basin. Um, I estimate that we dug out about 1500 cubic metres of spoil. Uh, photograph number two is um, in, the in the first instance we used an excavator, a long reach ex excavator, to dig out around the immediate berth. We found out later uh, that there was an area further seaward which we had to go in with a dredge. Um, since that time the area is re-silted. Uh, photograph um, number four is a photograph taken in January, February this year and it shows how the area we dredged is filling up with sand because the area in red um, is only 0.6 of a metre. So the, the channel designed to um, clean out the harbour has been blocked up. So it's obvious um, if you have a look at area, uh, photograph three. This is a chart of the changes in depths in the Cape Jervis port between 17th of the 6th, 2017 and 17th of the 9th, 2019, a two year period. The yellow and green areas show where it's silting and the blue areas show uh, where there's a lower depth. And the lower depth is the area we dredged out. Now that is filling up again because the, the cutting where the blue arrow is, is only 0.6. The turning basin under the sea link boats is five metres deep and it's almost impossible unless there's a lot of water in the turning basin for the rack, which is the weed and sand, to get out of the cutting uh, unless it's been opened up to somewhere near the depth of the turning basin. And also you can see there the obvious place for any silt that's stirred up by the ceiling base is to fill up the area we dredged. Uh, on Wednesday the 16th of September, in preparation for the recommencement of our summer service, uh, we took our vessel into Cape Jervis and left the propellers running to clean out uh, around our berth. Uh, we then did a survey um, of the area and we found a, a knob of weed immediately east of our berth and slightly north of the end of the groin which is now only 1.5 metres deep at uh, mid-tide. In other words, uh, our vessel draws 1.5 metres so that we can't use the berth. That's filled up by about 1.5 metres in two years and uh, it means we can't use the berth below medium tide. Whilst we were there, the sealing vessel came in and um, the video will show you how much sand and rack it stirs up when turning around. Now that was at mid-tide, at low tide it's much worse than that. Uh, and then about five minutes later I took the next video which shows that rack uh, washing out over the top of the sandbar out into the cutting and out into the ocean. Uh, it's absolutely imperative the government goes down there and cleans out that rack. I've spoken to Sealink and if the area under the Sealink turning basin continues to silt up, Sealink will not be able to run um, in, in, in strong winds um, this summer. Already we can't. There's a simple solution that needs to be done. The excavator needs to come down, clean out this small channel, so when the Sealink vessels turn around at low water, the rack that gets caught in the hollow underneath their turning basin can go out the cutting. If that doesn't work, well then dredging will have to be done by government. But Kangaroo Island Connect pays exactly the same mooring fees and per passenger wharf, which is Sealink. Already we can't use the harbour below half tide and it's getting to the point where Sealink won't be able to either. So we need to dig this channel out as a matter of priority and get, a, get access to an excavator there so it can be cleaned out regularly, ascertain whether that's going to help with uh, maintaining the depth and if not a dredge has got to go in there and fix it up. Um, Sealink can't operate uh, in high winds 
with very low underwater keel clearance because the propellers dig up weed and they lose power and it's basically unsafe. And of course we can't operate um, below half tide now because um, there's no clearance under our propellers. Irrespective of the, the birth works, the, the birth infrastructure that's required, there's a simple solution and it's to get a long reach excavator down there and clean out that cutting and then ascertain whether that helps flush the harbour. If that doesn't work, get a dredge down there and start maintaining the harbour to what are um, commercially acceptable levels under the keels of the vessels that operate there.